And hey everybody, welcome to this month's uh, tutorial video. Um, it's me painting Bird of Abolition, the evil guy from um, Luminous Ages. And I wanted to do something different because we did dragons last month. So I thought I'd showcase uh, character work, how I paint my characters and stuff. So I've pulled in some old stuff and let's hope uh, it all makes sense. So yeah, let's have a look. So here I'm just exploring like different silhouettes and um, just seeing if it all works. Like these are just like different kind of demon bosses or evil bosses. And this is just me painting with a grayscale brush and just kind of painting in a silhouette, just a, an outline of a character. And you, usually you can tell if something's kind of powerful. These are just villains, so just random villains. And, and so I kind of do this before I start coming up with a final idea or whatever. I just sketch a lot of different things just to warm up either warm up or one of them will end up being um, one of my designs so to speak um, and that's a good way to get started a lot of people kind of get um, held up and think uh, you know uh, you know they get held up on one design it's good to kind of smash out a few different options and that's why I just paint in black and white grayscale an outline and I'm just doing some weird demon with a with one horn coming out of the side of his head as you can see just with grayscale and the idea is not to be too fussy over it, like, you can see I'm taking my time, but I'm just kind of, like, playing around with the silhouette and see what happens from there. So, if you find this too daunting, maybe draw, maybe draw out your design. Um, but I like to paint, and just that way, like, kind of like flat colours and silhouettes, and that way I can, I suppose I can determine for myself, you know, is this going to be worth pursuing, and then I look at it and I go, oh yeah, is this good or is this bad? go from there. So, Barret of Abolition, just so you know, is just a custom character that I did for a fan. It's for Henry Davis, who um, is a Patreon backer. He's been backing the project for ages, and he's backing at a high tier, but he's also a volunteer. He's been um, testing the game. He tested the Luminous Ages card game since the beginning of the year. One of the core volunteers has been heaps, and so I thought I'll throw in a free custom character for him. Only because he probably did like about a thousand dollars worth of work in just testing the game. So I thought, well, we're going to do a nice character for him. And he wanted something evil, like he likes nightmare and, and dark stuff and evil stuff. He's a bit of a bad guy himself. I'm just joking. No, he, he's a nice guy. He's just He just likes, I suppose, to role play the bad guys, you know. I mean, the bad guys are fun too, you know. Good guy, bad guys are exciting, you know. I suppose that's what people want. And so, believe it or not, these sketches were done like at the beginning of the year. Actually, these e evil mare were just rough sketches, and I may have posted them a rough concept sketch on um, Patreon beginning of the year of these. And so, I actually had the recorded, and I thought, well, I'll put it at the start of the buried of abolition drawing. That way, you can see, hey, look, you know, this is why Patreon is worth it because you have all this work, and you have all these sketches, and you forget about videos, or you forget it. I've recorded so much content, and and so like you can actually pull back and, and let's say you add like I've, I've designed nightmare mages I can then pull out that folder that file and then use it on my the next one you can use elements or I can use that exploration and go hey I'm gonna apply that to the design so yeah at the end of the day um, the goal is to just explore and um, come up with ideas and keep every you know I know it sounds like I'm hoarding stuff but you really want to keep as much of the stuff as you can, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what you're going to use, you know, and um, it's just funny that, you know, you don't think that you're going to use something, but you do, um, and I, I find that that's a common thing with me, is that because Luminous Ages is an ongoing thing, um, even if I sketch something really weird, like, I'm, like, I might, sometimes I just do these mind dumps where I just, like, it's three o'clock in the morning, or it's midnight, and I am just want to do a sketch before bed, and I just sketch out this demon or a face or whatever it is or a dragon and or a landscape and it's just sitting there and it's like oh what what's that but it doesn't make sense why you do it but then later you look at it and think hey I could use that as a character in the comic this could be a background character or a side character and this is why I really you know I really um, I suppose um, really want to inspire you all to kind of come up with ideas you know, always don't 
like limit yourself to thinking oh once a painting's over a project's over you can't explore it more you know just explore and these are villains you know i mean i'm probably going to be exploring so many different villains in the character in the story because this huge evil is so astronomical in this world it's a dream universe so you can kind of do what you want so here i'm going so that's one you know he's got like a weird leg it looks like it's broken i oh, know yeah, i've painted it in it's funny it's like i don't even remember doing this this is the crazy thing this was over a year ago and i did this i know i did this but I'm like looking at it and I'm like, oh my god, I can't even remember doing this. I seriously can't remember painting this. Um, I remember the picture, but I just can't remember the process of it. And and that's why it's really, I think the great thing about Patreon or just making your own videos as well, art videos, is if you record it, you remember your process or you look at what you're weak at or you're strong at. Or that way you've got a recording of what you've done. You remember what you've done. A lot of people, you know, think, oh, you know. I just want to paint it like there is freedom in just painting something not having to record it but the benefit of um, um, of recording is that you've got that forever and you can always go back to it and you can use it or you can have a look at what you've done his stuff is so weird this guy's stuff is just like really weird it just doesn't work it's not functional what have I done I've changed his legs I think I made his legs look a bit evil so yeah <laughs> So here I'm painting another silhouette, just going for a different side angle. I think it's a side view. And like I said, it's nothing special. I just put two layers, background white layer, um, using a grey brush, just compositing or just painting a rough sketch. You know, it just can be blocks of shapes. You know what I mean? And and like, there's a lot of people that like don't like doing that because it's not that it's cheating, but it's just like really, you know, it, it's a bit too fast you know like you kind of don't have time to draw and explore things drawing i don't want you know people to think to forget that they need to draw things but i think there's something in painting getting a silhouette or just painting a composition from the start you know like you know it's way better here you go this is how old the painting is that painting that that reference in the background is katiuska moon fox which was done august of 2015 so why is her background why is she in the background i don't know maybe i was painting her so that's crazy like this probably was done 2015 you know some point i thought it was the beginning of the year but it was maybe a year and a half so i must have been painting this as a concept and also painting the um fire emblem illustration of the the portrait of caddy Houston moon fox the cosplayer so it's crazy how um you know, you can always use something, even just like a sketch, you sketch something for an hour, record it. 30 minutes, record it. Because you never know, it could be something you could use. Um, for those that want to know what software I use, I use Snagit. I, it's kind of like an offshoot to um, Camtasia. I do recommend Camtasia, but I personally don't have the budget for Camtasia either. Like that's like four or five hundred dollars for the license. And so I bought Snagit, which was the cheap uh, baby brother software for $150 and for me that worked out way better like, and it's it's good software has had driver issues with Windows 10 but I updated it and it looks it's better now it's working so you're always gonna have that with any software you know when you with Windows updating and stuff so but anyway here you go I reworked that leg because it was looking wrong the knees were in the wrong place and I've also got a crystal orb in his hand so don't ask why but yeah, he's got his evil. So I'm drawing another silhouette. I think I move on to the next one now. So I think I did about two or three. And maybe I grabbed one that I liked and turned that into Barrett of Abolition. It's funny because I just asked, um, actually Henry was like, I, I let him kind of look at the process and showed him sketches and like, no, like he liked it the whole way through. So it's like, I just add more details, you know, or add this or add that. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. So that's the benefit of doing that, working with fans is, you know, especially if they like what you're doing already, it's not that hard. It's just basically doing what the, what the client wants and what the fan wants and making sure you apply it. So yeah, it's um, lots of fun, I suppose. I'm still working on the first sketch. So yeah. Now if you see me fast forward or whatever to bits, 
Well, you, you don't hear me talking, that's because, um, yeah, I just don't want to repeat anything. <laughs> And I just want people to know, like, if there's something you want to know, like, if there's a huge poll, like, if, if a group of you got together, or if you, like, put in a comment, like, I may be doing a survey to see what sort of videos you want, but, like, if there's something you want, send me a message, like, like, I will keep a record of it, like, if there's, like, I want a tutorial on how to draw a head, or I want a tutorial on how to draw a dragon, or I want a tutorial on how to do a landscape, or how to do studies, whatever it is you want to know, Send me a message on Patreon, leave a comment on my wall, on the Patreon. You're paying for this, I want to help you out, I want to make sure you're getting what you want. And send it to me and I'll, and I'll at least if there's a, if there's, if I see there's a commonality of what everyone wants, if say everyone's like, they want to know how to draw a human head or how to draw, sketch out comic book panels, whatever it is, I can then tailor the content to what you got, you folks need. Um, so that's what Patreon's for. I mean, I'm here to help people as much as uh, you guys are backing my art. I still want to be, a, I don't want to be uh, like a teacher, like an art teacher, but I want to offer re resources that will help you. Because I found I learned, the best way I learned was watching videos. I mean, I went to art school and I learned a lot there, but the way I learned how to digitally paint was through Noman Workshop and videos like that. And, um, because and like being in the industry, that's the way I want to teach people. That's how I learn. And I'm, I mean, I do can do mentoring and private tuition, but I just prefer this. I just really like um, being able to record a video. You know what you based on what you all, all, all you folks want, and then making something that is it's kind of eternal. Because the thing is with videos, you can always play it back, and that's the benefit of a resource like that. You can always play it back and you go back to something. Whereas a class, you know, you can write notes down, but you never, your memory, memories like, this proves my point. I don't remember painting this stuff a year and a half ago. It was a year and a half ago. I don't remember doing this. I recorded it. But imagine if you watch this video, like I've watched, re-watched Noman videos. I've got them and I haven't even watched them in ages. But if I sit there and I probably, if I go and watch nearly every Noman workshop video over my holiday break or whatever, over Christmas, and I take some time to wind down and do that, like seriously, <laughs> it's amazing. Like I probably will learn something else or remember something and it will come to the forefront of my memory and bang, I've got that resource always there, that video to always play back and remember the foundations of art, you know? And so that's why I think this way method of learning is the best. And I'm not saying the other methods aren't good. They definitely work. You know, always, you know obviously you've got to practice but I just find sitting in a classroom just doesn't help people. You know, giving a lecture doesn't help people. Recording that lecture, giving them that resource to use for life is way more beneficial. Um, and that's just my two cents. Like, I'm not gonna get all lectury because I was a lecturer, <laughs> but um, that's just what I think. And that's why I've done the Patreon. Um, and obviously, like, being my own teacher, not being in a school, I can tailor the course to what I want to teach as well. I can go, well, if I want to teach more of this, characters, I can focus on that. If I want to teach environments, that's all I can. I want to do. People come to me for that. Or if it's comic book pages, I do do everything, as you know. So, but that's that's how, how I roll. Um, and, and I'm not, like, there is definitely me a merit to the traditional classroom. I think that really is great. Um, and for structure and stuff like so don't get me wrong but I think like having a resource in a classroom as well like whether it's a university class or primary school class or a high school class having this base resource will help students or help people to constantly learn now as you can see here I'm using I'm drawing the structure of the body here so I'm just going um, very kind of rough structure I'm drawing the torso the waist now, my, my recommendation is to look up Andrew Loomis's figure drawing um, books. It's a free resource online, um, Andrew Loomis's book. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm doing his, I'm not looking at any references. I'm just drawing based on that anatomy. You know, I'm, I'm basing it on the structure that he set up. And, and it's just based on human anatomy and physiology. You know, you got your waist bones, you got your, your, your so your pelvis bone, your, you got your waist, you've got the chest, you've got the arms, um, the legs, and that. And this is just a silhouette. I'm trying to make an evil person. Now, how do you make something evil? Like, there are, this is the interesting thing, see, 
within storytelling, within the human psyche, I mean, there's no right or wrong because there's so many cultures in the world. And, you know, like, I think for Japanese culture, I think white is a symbol of death. You know, that's what they wear at funerals. Whereas in the Western world, we all wear black, you know, for, to symbolize death when, when someone's passed away. Um, so, but there are certain iconograph iconographic things that sort of give you the impression that something's evil. You know, something that's scrawny or something that's bony and I suppose got horns, something like devil horns or whatever. Like you look at these characters, they've got something evil about them and it's just their posture, it's their their body shapes. You know, they they don't look inviting or welcoming, you know, and these guys got horns. Uh, well, I'm just added in the layer there just quickly like that. So yeah, and you know, maybe it's something imposing about him, you know. So there, I only did two <laughs> drawings. So sorry for that, I thought I did three. So there you go. I think this is where I start on Barrett. We'll see if this is Barrett. I think I'm just sketching another idea for Barrett of abolition. So, so just, just drawing, just doodling, just drawing like a demon head and all that sort of stuff. I think this is the third concept sketch. I think I looked at the other ones and then kind of applied it. I looked at those sketches and did that. I really wanted something that was, because for Henry, I really wanted to make it something that was really evil. Look, he's an evil guy. He's sneaky. So, like, the story beat is like he's just daggered someone. He's got a dagger in his hand. Just stabbed someone in the back and he's running off. You know what I mean? He's a sneaky, sneaky character. You know, he's a bad guy. He's not meant to be good. So, like, something like him, like, running or in motion was the key. And this is the kind of posture I was drawing. So... So all I'm doing here is like, I've just penciled out an idea, you know, um, and so I'm trying to put, you know, one foot forward like he's running, another leg foot backwards. And like, he's got some sort of mask, you know, he's like a mask figure. I mean, for some reason, in masks in cultures is a symbol of evil. I mean, you've got Darth Vader with the masks. You know, samurais were feared characters in Japanese cultures, so they had masks. Um, and even the Spartans, you know, they had, you know, big helmets that were covering their faces. So I'm not saying the Spartans are evil or the Samurais are evil, but they were feared, you know, as they were meant to be feared in arm in armies or whatever. So if you look at, um, you know, again, it's all about iconography. It's all about, um, I suppose cultural meanings of and symbols symbol you know symbology making sure that symbols have a meaning or you know or, or whatever and you know something like this signifies a mask which usually signifies something evil or powerful um, and the horns symbolizing evil and all that sort of stuff and I know it's quite literal but I mean at the end of the day you, you use these cultural traditions or cultural meanings to apply to your artwork um so here you know he's got claws for feet as well he's a demon i think the feet change to a different weight like they well the tail is different and the feet change 
this is just really rough, you know, this is, it's still an anatomically got a lot of errors and I'm not happy with it at this point, you know. It was a real struggle doing this actually, um, I just found that I wasn't happy with it and, and I really wanted it to be, he's a main quest character in the game, he's a quest character, I don't know, he probably will appear in the comic at some point, maybe as a character that gets killed off really quickly, sorry Henry. <laughs> Um, but he's a quest character in the game, and um, you can play him right now on the Luminous Ages card game, which is cool. Now, the Luminous Ages card game is for all ages. It's G-rated. Um, you know, this is about as scary as the artwork gets. It's nothing like there's no violence or gory scenes or blood or anything in the paintings. Um, there are obviously scary characters, like, but I would probably liken it to Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings, as dark as the Lord of the, Lord of the Rings, you know, not totally scary like I can show this to I've shown this to my niece and my nephew and they've got no problems they're not they don't have nightmares or anything and honestly like my niece gets scared of stuff very easily like she's seen some video games just walking past the room and she'll start crying we have to turn it off you know straight away and so like this way I, I wanted to make sure that it was scary but not overly scary to the point where kids are scared away from the comic book because I want to make sure that it's good and things to avoid if you want to make it appear G-rated, is nothing, no red eyes. Red eyes scare people. That's actually a psychologically proven thing that anything with red eyes is quite scary and demonic, and it's actually known psychologically to scare children or even adults or anyone. Um, it's been proven even the never-ending story. I think The Wolf, this is an old movie, for those of you that don't know The Never-Ending Story. It's an old um, uh, film, which was a fantasy film in the 80s, and the wolf was the bad guy, I um, can't remember his name. And the wolf was um, had red eyes in the first cut of the movie. And then it scared that many children, gave them that many nightmares. They had to re-edit the movie and put it, release it again in the cinemas or whatever on DVD with green eyes instead. So stuff like that you've got to really have knowledge of when you're designing for film or games or comics is understanding how far can you go. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, we've got... Um, you know, we've got bad guys and girls, but we're not going to be showing overly violent or graphic scenes. You know, there'll be, obviously there'll be like combat, you know, they'll be fighting. Heroes will be fighting with staffs or with magic using spells and magic. But, but there won't be like, you know, decapitations or anything horrific like Game of Thrones. And I suppose the goal is to show, you know, uh, maybe there'll be an adult version of Luminous Ages or a side, you know, a darker version later on where it's, you know, an episode or a character that is very dark. Um, so yeah, what can you do? That's it. Um, I've given him three tails, just to kind of look him, three ends, like a, three ends to his tail to kind of look him, make him look a bit scary. So. And this is all in black and white. I mean, it's not finished, so it's, you know, going to take time to get right. So yeah, it's just a matter of um, going through making sure everything's right. Painting in black and white or grayscale. So all I did, what I noticed was the feet were wrong. And so I just kind of had to rework backwards and go, uh, I want the feet to look different to what they look like now. So I just, I used the top and I repainted the top and I used elements of what I had before, but I reworking things and using a different cropping, a different framing to give it a different vibe and feel. But I, I think I'm a lot happier with it here. Obviously he's got daggers and he looks like he's in motion, like he's running and the, the cape's following him behind him. And yeah, things are going really good.
and what I do is sometimes as you can see here I did a very dark kind of black and white painting and then I drop that into another layer and I put a mask over it like a white layer and then I pencil above it and what that does is I redraw see I've got a very rough sketch but I redraw and fix up the anatomy like I redraw the whole thing make sure it looks right you know and like as you can see how I'm redrawing the legs I think I go and redraw the daggers, I redraw the mask, everything to give it the detail and the feel that it needs. It changes dramatically from here to the end, you know, it's a very different painting. But this is what, what, I, what I would do is when you get your thumbnails, you put them in, drop them in, in a light layer below, put a white mask on top, lock that layer, then draw above it in another layer. You have three layers, one for the sketch, the rough, underneath, you lock that, you put a white layer, you lock that, but you put a, a white layer, but you put about 50% opacity. Then on top you trace over and redraw everything. I've redrawn everything. I've re-penciled it from my rough thumbnail. You know, I did the two thumbnails before. I did a third thumbnail for Barrett. And this is one way of, it's not cheating. People go, oh, you're tracing over your own image. How can you be cheating if you're tracing over your own artwork? You know, it's not cheating. Um, just so you know, illustrators, when I was back in the day and I was learning, um, I didn't have digital technology. We didn't have digital painting. Now this is, it's interesting because we had light boxes where you could put your drawing and trace over your light box and then, you know, trace over, with a light box, you know, paint over things and get things right or draw over it. And so this is just no different. You know, it's just you're using Photoshop with layers to, to trace over your old drawing and make it better. So this is making it more dynamic. I'm actually able to fix up the anatomy I'm using elements of what I've done in the past and I'm going in putting a better biceps, better arms, fixing up the mask, fixing up the horns. I've given this guy one, two, three, four, five horns, two on the side, two above and one in the middle. And I like this, I like the motion, I actually really like the feel of this Barrett. I think it, it's, this is better than how it ends up, but um, it's just what, the, what, what Henry wanted was at the end result, he was happy with that, you know. Which is all part of it. So as you can see, I'm just drawing like, you know, the arms, the hands, the horns, everything, making sure it's good. Um, loads of fun. There's a big sigh. Sorry. <laughs> just thinking of what to say next. So here I'm just detailing the mask, the mouth and all that, and I'm making him look, his, his whole face is moving, he's looking to the left, to his right, sorry, and he's maybe looking at his victim, he maybe stabbed someone, or he's running away from the good guys, or something like that, and he's looking down, he's like, maybe he's planted something, maybe he's gone in and done some, put a, I don't know, a bomb or something, or, you know, he's done something mean, you know, so he's kind of looking down at what he did and running off. So I really like penciling over my grayscale sketch because I can fix it up, make my drawing better, make the design better, and rework it and really make sure that it's, rather than pushing paint around, and there's nothing wrong with pushing paint around to get to a design, I'm actually able to go over my drawing, my, my painting, my initial painting, and make it better, rework it. You know, go in and go, hey, this is how I want it to be, you know. And I'm quite happy with this drawing. This drawing looks really strong. It looks, the anatomy looks spot on. You know, he, he looks quite intimidating now. You know, he, he's got this huge claw. I don't know if I kept that. I hope I kept that because I really like that huge claw right now. <laughs> it looks really menacing and scary. I probably got rid of it. So we'll see. But yeah, that looks cool. Why did I get rid of that? If I got rid of that, why did I get rid of it? I don't have a card in front of me at the moment, the Barrett card. Oh. It's, just, it's funny how paintings just change over time, over the process of making a picture or while you're doing it or your clients, while you're working with your clients, it just changes. You know, I did change it. Oh my God, that's crazy. You know, I like that big claw. You needed like that big, like, like a crab claw. That would have been awesome. But instead I went for the crappy hand. See, this is it. Like now, like I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a character with a really weird big hand, you know. Maybe it's like a, an artifact hand, you know. So that's the next idea, alright? I promise. Next villain, I'll have a weird, weird kind of crabbish kind of hand. Um, and that's the thing, like making something stand out iconogra like iconographically 
is what makes characters stand out, you know, in the movies. You know, Darth Vader has the red, the mar the black mask, sorry, and and the red lightsaber, and, and same with Kylo Ren, he's got like the red eyes near his, around his mask. And, and stuff like that, like, um, you know, Yoda is this little green guy, he's, he's known as this little green guy with big ears, you know. Um, Chewie is, is a hairy kind of, I don't know, <laughs> ape monster or whatever he is. A Chewbacca, you know. A Chewbacca is, um, got his iconographic look, you know. But it's, more than that, it's like, you know, certain characters look mean because they do have some sort of mean character to them, or mean aspect to them, you know, Darth Vader is that mask. Um, I mean, even if you look at Lord of the Rings, you know, again, the bad guys, Sauron and all that, they've all got masks, the, the, the evil guys have masks, you know. And so, but, you know, like, what about having something like, you know, this guy, I actually think he's quite unique, I think, like, I'm not going to say he's totally unique, but he's got five horns, you know, he's got one big horn coming out the center of his head, two on the side, and two, and two four on each side, two on each side, sorry. I hope I kept those horns. If I didn't keep all those horns in it, I really have destroyed my own design. <laughs> but that's it, that's just the process. Sometimes you just get rid of things because it doesn't work, or... Um, that's part of drawing, you know. And there you go, look, I've gone back on my work. I've just, I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm making the pencil. This pencil is the final pencil. I'm making sure it's really, really good and polished. As you can see, I've just pulled out the grayscale and just gone to penciling the whole thing. So we'll skip forward a bit and we'll talk about the pencil in a minute. Oh, there we go, and I put a bit of black there. So we'll go through, I'll, I'll go to a point where we start painting it the full thing.
All right, so here is the final pencil. So sorry about blubbing on before about penciling and all that sort of stuff. I added in the tail. That's the this the signifier that symbolises that he's evil. Instead of having three ends, so it's got one end. And I go in and I, I keep the pencils in a separate layer and I paint, fill it in. And you can see there's my other sketch from before, um, the older sketch which I don't like, you know. And so I'm just refining this. And I did keep all the horns. I kept um, the five horns as discussed. So what I do, did is I just reworked the pencil from the sketch on the left. I redrew everything. I put in a tail. I made the legs different. I gave him these bigger thighs, you know. He's a demon. So I like basically what would happen is he's actually his feet are going backwards like a they're actually he's really tall, but we only seeing his his from his knees up or the boots up. So, you know, maybe he has like, you know, almost like um hooves, you know, for legs, the bottom parts are hooves, they are because he's a demon. He's demon kin. So, you know, sorry kids if this is scary. Um I hope it's not too scary as an artwork. So yeah, I'm just painting in and making sure it all kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm just painting the silhouette, I'm just using, so the pencils are refined, I'm just going in with grey, filling it in with like just a grey colour, it's just a flat grey colour, and, and maybe for the skin I go for white, I, I, because I want the silhouette to stand out, the character to stand out, I put grey behind in the background, and I start to work out where the light source is coming from, whether it's from the right or, not, or from the left. So the, the light source is probably coming in from the right. And uh, yeah, again, this is sped up. So this is just so that way we're not sitting there, you're sitting there waiting forever to see me doing stuff. And I'm using just the mixer brush. I think it's like a mixer brush or the um, smudge brush to paint in like a cloud or atmosphere in the background. So yeah, just painting in, filling in the colour, so I have everything in a layer. I've got the pencils in the top layer, I, I colour in, bear it in a layer below, and then I have a background layer for the effects, all the atmosphere and all that sort of stuff. Loads of fun. Using different textured brushes here as well now. So just painting in, really just working it in black and white, like working out what the light source is coming from the right, and how to see, like from that initial sketch, it's got a lot more information, a lot more details. It looks, it looks a lot more 
finished even already, you know. It's not finished, but it looks like it's got more information there versus the old one. Which is the benefit of reworking your sketch, tracing over it, fixing up the drawing, fixing up the foundations, because my drawing is right, all I'm doing is rendering this baby up and making it look magical, you know. That's the advantage of getting your drawing right, your, or your initial concept sketch right. You know, doing five or six, picking the right one, and then making sure it works. So I'm just making a blue background. Just I put a bit of a blue background just to differentiate between the character and the background, so that way I can see it, it pops out better. You know, blue is always good to have as a background color because blue is kind of muted. Um, it makes whatever's in the foreground stand out. And also because of, um, you know, atmospheric perspective. If you look at the horizon line, I've probably gone into this before, but if you look at the horizon line in the landscape, it, you know, if you go out to the beach or you look at, you know, anywhere you go out and you look at the city from a distance, you look at the buildings further away, they have blue. Because that's because of atmospheric perspective. As things recede, in a distance um, because of, you know, um, the distance and the lighting and um, the atmosphere, it, things become bluer and bluer because they're further and further away and that's just because light is reflecting from the ground, from the sky, you know, the sky, you know, so then you see the real, you see what it looks like from a distance, you know, you don't have, you're not closer to the object. As you get closer to an object, then you see it's lit up, you can see what colour it is, it doesn't have a blue haze to it or whatever. But anyway, that's off topic, that's more a discussion for landscape and environment painting. So here we're just going in and just, all I'm doing is just painting the light source and getting that right. And then get this up in another layer and going from there. So here I'm just applying colour. And I'm just putting in like a base colour, I use that in the colour layer. I believe it's a colour layer or an overlay layer, sorry. You can probably see it better than me. So it's an overlay layer and I've just, um, I have that in the layer above and I just put, you know, orange, yellows and the green, the green, the blue, sorry, and greys. So that's the, um, the whole idea is to kind of, I suppose, just give a rough indication of what the colours are, what the tones are for the final painting, you know. So just doing that with an overlay layer.
So just, um, I suppose, creating a, last, a mask, sorry, a selection tool. So all I'm doing here is I flatten the pencil with the, the, the rough color and created one layer. That way, like now, you know, everything's ready to go. I'm just painting on top of this and, and hammering and rendering it up. You know, we did a pencil, I did grayscale, I did an overlay layer, I got the rough in, I got the rough color, the mood in, and now it's just a matter of painting to make sure it looks good, you know? Getting it right, adding details to it and building it up, and doing a bit in the background as well. So yeah, it takes time to get there, but it gets there. Making, putting a bit more darkness behind him as well, so he pops out a bit more. And it, you know, that's the mood of the character, it's, it's evil, you know? There's got to be something dark about it. You know, it's all, you know, clouds and fog and mist and magic, dark magic or whatever. He's a bad guy, you know. So. And Tao's looking really cool. Tao kind of makes you focus in on the characters, so you look at the character, you know. The tail has got a shape where it draws your eye in into the character and then back around to the head and then back around to the tail and it just keep, keeps them going around like a circle. So these keep the viewer looking at the page, you know, the cape draws your eye in from the top left into the head and the legs draw you in as well. So everything draws you into that central point of him. So I think I dropped the background because it was too bright, I dropped it to a dark colour. So I'm playing around with the values now in the rough version right now, so loads of fun. So by playing around with the values, I'm able to kind of make the character stand out more, you know, play around and make it, I suppose, matter. And I'm just painting in a different colour. So I just go on like this, trying to make him pop and build it up, you know.
So yeah, all I'm really doing is adding details and, and I make sure that, that I've selected the character so he's always in a separate layer, you know, and I'm going in, I'm just making sure the lighting makes sense so that way the focusing the focus is on him. So you have, like, I've obviously got this white or yellowish kind of rim light around him and the background is very kind of soft, desaturated. And what I'm doing is I'm zooming out to see if on a small level, on a postage stamp level, does he still stand out? And the question, the answer is no. You know, I, I need to push it further. So I'm just painting in, I've got the selection there, and I'm just painting in highlights, extra color, saturation, all that sort of stuff to build it all up. You can hide those, those dot, the selection by pressing Control H, and it hides that star-like selection around it. So I'm just going in and making sure, just painting it up. So that's all I'm really doing, just painting it up.
So here it's starting to make more sense. I mean, you can see me like hammering on it, trying to make it stand out. Like I, I've got more like highlights on the right hand side, and I really this is a very dark piece. But the whole idea is to create focal point and to do it as simply as possible. And to create a focal point, you know, you can paint a very dark painting and just have one area of light, you know. And because it's a simple character, we're able to do this. This is probably the most easiest and quickest, the most, I suppose, fastest trick in the, in the art world is to create a character and just have a focal point and create dark darkness around it, make it very dark around the whole thing. And that's kind of the fastest way to create some concept art or illustration. And you could say it's a cop-out, but the reality is it does fit the mood of this piece. It is a, a dark character. He's a scary character. Um, you know, if I have him around, if I have the, the mood, if I have, had him in a mood where it was blue light, it was, you know, open daytime and really gorgeous setting, he would not fit the theme and the mood of the painting. He's an evil character. Um, so I'm here, I'm just trying to create that focal point, draw attention, draw focus around the cat, around Barrett, you know, so you draw into his horns. I'm so glad that I kept the five horns. <laughs> I, w I, I kind of really wish that arm was bigger, the left arm was like this weird crab arm or something like that, like you know how a crab has one huge claw and a smaller claw? That would have been cool, but I think, I think then people would be like, what is he, demon crab? That's a problem. <laughs> So here I'm just going in and just painting more details, making it pop out, um, adding like light, see, as you can see I'm adding edge lighting and I'm just refining the work now and just fixing it all up, you know, and, I, and I've given his mask like the feeling, like his mask, it's like, it looks like it's part of his fate, that's an idea, but it's, but it's not, it's actually a mask, a mask wouldn't be that mechanical, it wouldn't be that industrial, it looks like it's something that's made. So his face underneath would be something quite horrific, you know, but that mask covers it. You know, it sits on his face, it clicks, it, it kind of like clicks into his horns. Those horns on the side, it clicks in and grabs onto. So like, all I'm doing is doing a lot of edge control now. Edge control is just cleaning up edges, adding, you know, highlights where highlights need to be, softening off edges where it needs to be softer, softer, uh, softer, <laughs> not softer. <laughs> And going in and just cleaning up things as much as possible. Like, it's really important to do that. A lot of people kind of forget how important that is. So, yes. Lots of fun. Just putting in more clouds in the background. So here it's just, this process, I'm really, it's starting to pop out more. The character pops out. It's just playing around with and adding more details, you know. Um, I think you'll see me clicking on the black and white layer in a moment, the saturation layer, which is a black layer, and I basically make sure that things are correct, you know, it's, it's just important to do that. And I've also added more three-dimensionality to the tail to make it look a little bit more, kind of like a snake's tail, a bit scary. And he's got like markings as well all over it, like a tattoo. That's the dream markings, dream age markings. So we're just going in and making him look more horrific. Well, not horrific, I suppose, more detailed so you can see all the stuff. Again, like I said, I've got that in a separate layer. He's in a separate layer and then I've got everything else in a separate layer. So yeah, just playing around with the levels to make the character pop out even more. 
So as you can see here, I'm, I'm working in black and white to, to see does he stand out, and he does. I mean, the face is where you're drawn into because the lightest lights and the darkest darks are there. I'm also seeing that the dagger is not standing out, so I made the dagger have a highlight and all that, and I paint more details into the dagger because it kind of is hidden. So yeah, he kind of, you know, I've got that right mood with him, like he's kind of in motion, he's moving, he's walking away, maybe he just um, attacked someone, maybe he's done something, he's stolen something and he's walking away, he's got his dagger, he's a sneaky, he's a sneaky demon, definitely Barrett, he's a bit naughty, he's definitely very naughty, he's evil. <laughs> so we'll continue on, you can just see I'm just adding more and more details, so I'll keep on going on talking about it in a minute. So I'll let you keep on, I'll let the video keep on playing.
And here it's like really, to make the, him stand out, this is where I'm adding all the details. I'm adding marks on the face, I'm adding edge lighting. This is where I really clean it up and make it the face the focal point. You know, it's a mask, so I've got to show the highlights on the mask. Uh, the tattoos on the mask, as you can see, I'm making them stronger so it stands out. So you can see he's, you know, he's an evil mage. And so, like, this is where, this is where it really does matter. At the end, with a character like this, you really want to focus and add details right at the end to make the focal point's going to have more detail because you want that to pop. You know, that's what's the most important part. A lot of people forget about that. You know, they think, oh, I'd be fine. I don't need to do that. But it's just that's that's where it all matters that those final details in an area like the, the mask or the focal point is what makes or breaks a painting you know like i think it would have been three hours or four hours before i did this part i showed it to to henry and he's like no nah, it's not there yet you know and, and i agreed with him and, and i was like all right let me work on it more and spending another three four hours detailing up adding the edge lighting adding Details, it's just details at the end of the day and making sure the details are in the right place in the focal point, you know, highlights, darkest dark to the lightest light, so you should see how the mask has got that white highlight and then you've got that dark shadow around the mask, it makes his head pop out between the mask and the horns, you know, and it really does stand out, so you look at that and then I think I even make the background darker, you know, so I've got the, the Barrett in a different layer and, um, I think I do a levels adjustment on Barrett and then a levels adjustment on the background so that way the background might be darker so that way Barrett pops out so the edge lighting comes out and it shows off the character better. You know, it's all these little things. I think I do a color balance at the end to make it stand out, make it stronger. And that's the thing, you really got to make sure that you do all that stuff. You know, a lot of people forget to do this stuff and yeah, they end up in all sorts of trouble because they don't do it, you know. And it's not that they end up in trouble, but it's just the, it, the painting is a shy, is only a, a quarter of what it could have been, you know, it could have been way better, you know. And it's just having the tolerance level to want to paint and detail things further, you know. As you can see, he's popping out now really well, looks pretty cool. The colour palette at the end looks good, it's dark, it's not, like, honestly, this painting, the reality is it doesn't sell. And maybe it doesn't sell because it's the colours, or maybe it doesn't sell because it's evil and it's dark, um, or maybe it doesn't sell because it's not, it's only been introduced into the card game and the character isn't in the comic yet, you know. So these are things that you've got to understand when you're creating original artwork, characters, you've got to really do it for the love of it. It's not about, you know, doing something for the money and hoping that it's going to sell heaps. Um, you really want to create it because that's what you want to do, you know, and that's that's the end and result, you know. Um, it's always nice that, you know, people back my art. It's brilliant. It helps me to make the art. You know, I'm not saying don't have goals when you're making art, but remember that you want to make art for your own sake. You know, it's not just about the money. You want to make something that you want to create, that you want to put in the world that's got your flavor, your touch to it. Um, and that's just my, you know, advice when creating art. Like, don't sell out don't just do a whole bunch of fan art because everyone else is doing fan art look it doesn't bother me if people want to do that but you know at the end of the day it's great because there's less people creating original content i mean i, would I want to see more people making original content but i got less competition because everyone's making fan art you know um but just keep that in mind like you know you never know i i never know what painting is going to be popular like I might paint 10 paintings before shows comic conventions and go to a show and, and a particular dragon or a particular demon is what people really like you know or a particular animal or creature or a mermaid or whatever it is and it's like you never know that that's if that's going to be popular you know there's usually formulas to kind of say oh you know designing a dragon or whatever it is there's a formula to a creature that might sell there's you know things you could paint that might be more popular but there's no guarantee because it all depends on the artwork, you know. Is there emotion in the artwork? Is there a story? Is there enough detail in the artwork? You know, like here, I'm just hammering it. And I've painted all this extra detail and, you know, I suppose what matters is the fan appreciated it. You know, Henry appreciated it. He's got a character in the game. He's, been, he's had his own character made in the game. 
And that's all that matters at the end of the day is, is he's happy, you know, and I'm happy because I did something that I really liked. So yeah, that's the whole point of it. So all I'm doing here is just adding details, 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 details. It looks boring, but it's just cleaning it up, making sure every edge is crisp. It looks magic. And we'll go into the final processing in a minute. So here in the final processing, I'm just adding, like I said, details to the whole thing, edge, edge lighting on everything, even on the back of that cape, the, the collar. But it's also a matter of going in and going, you know, I add a color balance layer. I added, uh, I think it's a photo filter as well. And I switched them on at the end. But um, it's just cleaning up everything, making sure everything's got a crisp edge or a soft edge. It doesn't have to all be crisp edges. You may want soft edges so edges blur off and not in focus. No, but it's about cleaning up all the details and making sure everything is right in this illustration. And that's basically all I did at the end is I added one color balance, a photo filter, because the whole painting was done. I mean, I'd been painting on this for a while. I've been hammering it, you know, making sure it was really good um, or to the level that I was happy with. So, I mean, this leaves us at the end of the video. Um, I hope this helped you in some way. And remember, sketch as many ideas as you can, trace on top of them. Uh, to rework them and get the anatomy right, the sketch right, or the drawing right. Um, spend time on making sure it's right, then go to color, use overlay or a color layer to color it and make it better, and just take time in making something good. You know, it's, it's nothing can speed up hard work and painting. You know, like you can get better and faster at what you do, but it's still going to take time to make a painting and get a painting finished and done to a level that you're happy with. So just remember that, and um, that's about it. So anyway, I just wanna um, wanted to show you this process. I hope it was helpful. Again, if you've got any recommendations, you've got any questions, ask me on Patreon, send me a private message, or um, 
send me a message on the wall. Um, yeah, so it's just cleaning up this, adding the final colour balance, which is the layer above, and going from there. So thank you very much for watching this. Um, hope it was good fun. And uh, next month we're doing the Waratah, which is Dragon Bird King. It's a little bit more exciting. Um, and uh, we're going from there. But other than that, thank you for watching. I hope it's helpful. Any suggestion on topics, let me know uh, for fantasy. Um, but yeah, thank you so much and have a good day. And that's the final painting. <laughs> Alright, take care. Thank you.